Hello and welcome back to Beckler Guitars and Repair. Today we're checking out a 59 Dan Electro double cut in Keen Green. So I'm always kind of interested in green guitars and uh, this one popped up locally so I checked it out and uh, it played really well so it needs a little bit of work but uh, yeah let's go through it. So this is the Dan Electro 59 double cut in Keen Green. There's been a couple different iterations of these over the years and uh, they always come out in different colors and slightly different uh, bridges and stuff like that. but. Essentially, they're all pretty much the same. Dan Electros have a masonite uh, top and bottom. Uh, they're hollow bodies. So masonite is basically like an MDF kind of material, like kind of a drywall material. Um, yeah, it's kind of interesting. And uh, the sides are all made of plywood. And they use this vinyl cover to go around the sides. And they have these very specific... Uh, proprietary pickups which are lipstick pickups they're called because they look like a, a lipstick tube it's basically just a, a single coil pickup in a housing and uh, the original bridges had the rosewood bridge with like a metal piece like this but just a piece of rosewood but that's kind of hard to intonate so some of these models have uh, these saddles so the saddles are adjustable back and forth so you can intonate it a little bit easier and they also have height screws adjustments as well. Some of the 59s have the double knobs, so it's a two-stage knob with the uh, uh, volumes at the bottom and tone is at the top. But this iteration just has a volume and tone knob with a three-way switch. Also has a rosewood fingerboard. This one's really dirty, a lot of cheese on there, so we're going to have to clean it up. And these have maple necks with a aluminum nut. There's a look at the back. So here is our cavity cover so we can remove this and see our controls. These screws are actually for adjusting the height of the pickup in the front. So adjusting those screws will lower or raise those top pickups and there's these are a bolt-on neck as well unfortunately the serial number on these models came on a little sticker that would sit right here and someone has removed that you might be able to find something in the neck pocket or in the cavity plate uh, to confirm the year Alright, it's weighing in at a very light 6 pounds, 6.8 ounces. And our lipstick single coil bridge pickup is reading a 3.67. And in our neck position, it's reading a 3.55. And our middle position is a 1.82. So quite low output on these pickups, which would, to means it's going to be pretty vintage sounding. Width that the nut is a 1.69 and at the 12th fret a 2.09 and our neck depth at the first fret is a 0.86 and at the 12th fret a 0.935 and here's a look at the neck profile pretty standard rounded C neck and it flattens out just a little bit by the 12th fret. Uh, the neck feels a little bit chunky, just kind of in the middle, not too chunky, but not too thin. All right, here's a peek underneath the pick guard. So our, it's, our cavity's in the top here, and uh, you can see the plywood in the back in the cavity there. Let me just have a quick look, let me show you. And, uh, it's using full-size pots, which is nice. And these are, you've got a little capacitor there, that little green thing. 
Looks like there's a treble bleed on here as well, which is interesting. I wasn't really expecting that. And then we've got a three-way pickup selector here. So it all looks pretty nice, nice quality. And uh, yeah, these guitars are fully hollow, but they have a center block um, underneath the pick pickups as well. And here you can see in our pickup cavity, there is that plywood center block that runs right underneath the pickups. It's routed out for the pickups. And here's a look at one of our pickups. It's uh, basically a single coil pickup in this uh, tube housing. And then they have these little uh, pieces of brass here that uh, are designed to work very much like a spring. So the uh, screw tension on these little brackets will make the pickup pop up or down. one needed a little persuasion to get out and uh, yeah the neck pickup is just more of the same here we are with the neck off so yeah no markings of any kind in the neck pocket uh, you can see the plywood here and then as far as the neck goes you need to take your or you need to take the neck off to adjust the truss rod on this one. So there's our truss rod there, and it's just black, no other markings on it. You can see it's got a nice thick piece of rosewood for the fingerboard, so that's cool. And the rosewood actually looks quite nice on this. It just needs some cleaning, some cheese on there, and uh, I'm gonna buff the frets out as well. Here's a look at the headstock. So yeah, really nice shape. No scratches or dings anywhere, and our aluminum nut is nicely cut. And this is after I cleaned and oiled the fingerboard and buffed the frets. So we got nice, super shiny frets and nice clean fingerboard. It's actually a really nice piece of rosewood. Nice dark streaks and nice and thick. And uh, <clears throat> as far as condition goes on the guitar, Really nice shape, no scratches or dings. A couple little spots that has worn to the finish just by normal use. And uh, some the pickups are a little bit worn and oxidized along with the bridge. Kind of gives it that relic look, but uh, still in good condition. There's a little bit of a bubble in the wrap on the side here and some yellowing of the wrap as well. A little bit of uh, yellowing coloration in a few spots. And the back, really nice shape as well. I really like this green finish. And a little bit of a ding there. And our neck's in nice shape, a couple little impressions there, but nothing, nowhere else on the neck here. And those look at our, the back of our headstock with the Dan Electro tuners. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and restring this and see what kind of a setup we can get on it. All right, all restrung and set up. Let's uh, check the setup here. So yeah, you can see with the uh, notch straight edge that there's very little space between the straight edge and the fingerboard. That means the truss rod's set nice and tight, and straight. And then over here in the third fret, you can see that when I use the third fret that the, on the first fret, the string is just resting nicely against that. So very nice action there. And then at the 12th fret on uh, the low E at the 12th fret, our action's at about 1.25, so quite low there. And at the 12th fret, we're looking at just under a one. So very low action. I'm just gonna run through the frets quickly to check for buzzing or fretting out. I like to speed up this part, but if you wanna hear it in real time, just slow down the player to 25%.
So there we are, yeah, action's nice and very low um, with no buzzing or fretting out anywhere. So yeah, it plays really, really nice. Especially with those buff frets, it's really nice and easy to bend. So yeah, it plays great. The frets are also super smooth and uh, there's no fret sprout at all. All right, let's go ahead and plug it in and see how it sounds. All right, I'm plugged it into my modded 65 Fender Deluxe reissue and everything's where it's usually at 4.5 for gain treble and bass and two for reverb and I'm using a Carl speaker so continuator for more tube sound at lower volumes. I'm just going to start off clean and go through each position and then we'll switch to a little bit of overdrive. <laughs> Yeah, sounds great clean uh, in every position it's got that really nice Dan Electro chime and uh, yeah the single coil sound really good clean let's uh, go ahead and try it with a little bit of dirt <laughs>
right, final thoughts on the 2007 59 Dano in Keen Green. Yeah, so the prices on these have went up new. I think they're around $700. At one point, they were around, I think, three to $400 uh, US, brand new. So they've gone up quite a bit, but you can still find these on the used market sometimes for pretty reasonable prices. I found this one for a pretty good price. It needed a little bit of work, but now it sounds and plays great. Uh, the fretboard was pretty dirty and it needed a fret buff and a pretty substantial setup. But once I got it all dialed in, it, it's a really great guitar. It plays really nicely. Uh, action lower than I'm usually able to get on a lot of guitars. So um, for a guitar at this price point, that's really nice. The pickup sounded great, super jangly and chimey and vintage sounding. And uh, really nice big piece of rosewood on this, which is great with the maple neck and the masonite body, our top and bottom, and then plywood. <laughs> and uh, these are just really nice, super simple guitars, but they're really well made and uh, they do play and sound great. I've reviewed about three or four Dan Electro so far on this channel and each one has been really nice. So keep an eye out if you find a decent one come up near you. Go ahead and jump on it because a lot of the times these are really great. And yeah, Dan Electro is one of those guitars that every single rock star has because a lot of people grew up on these guitars back in the 50s and 60s because they weren't very expensive but they were still really good. And they just have a sound that you can't really get out of other guitars. Um, so they're definitely worth having one in your arsenal. But that's going to be it for today. Thank you for tuning in to Beckler Guitars and Repair, and I'll have more for you really soon. Thanks a lot.